Hello, this is Ken Perry with this week's Boots in the Field report. Man, a massive amount of beans and corn have went in this past week. Corn we planted in our plots on Tuesday noon was emerged Saturday already. That's just crazy. Be careful with that too on these uh, cornfields with your pre-emergence burndowns. Make sure you get there before it emerges. A lot of already planted corn and soybeans were saved this past week. I gotta say, I didn't think there were that many rotary hoes in the country. The number of hoes running last week was unbelievable. I think some of you guys have been sandbagging in the past when you said you didn't have a hoe. Ground hold last Monday and Tuesday was really working well. By Wednesday or Thursday it was starting to change already. And by Friday into Saturday, that window was closing as far as trying to get it done with the hoe. The ground was getting harder. Getting several calls on both corn and bean fields that did not get hoed and are dealing with the crust right now, struggling to emerge. Now, many of these fields are probably past the point where a rotary hoe will do any good. With that said, I would give it a try. Most likely you're going to need to run that hoe twice to get through it. And we can also use our corn planters, if we're done with them, uh, as a more aggressive hoe. As we always recommend with the hoe, set some flags. First, decide how many plants you think you can help versus how many you got that don't need help. Run the hoe through, check between those flags again to see if the number improved. Then turn around and run the hoe through it a second time and see if the number keeps improving. If you put your tile flags in deep enough, the hoe won't pull them out. Work with actual numbers instead of seeing one bean and deciding that the hoe is doing too much damage. Look for uh, how many you're improving versus how many you're taking out. Some of these fields are going to need to be replanted. We need to make the call on these corn fields quickly. we got a little more time on the soybeans. But don't stutter around too much on these cornfields if they need to be replanted. When making replant decisions, we need to take the emotions out of it and work with real numbers. Calling in here and tell me your stand is crap doesn't mean as much as calling in here and tell me you have 24 or 26,000 uh, ears out there, projected ears. And you're going to need both. You're going to need a stand count and your projected ear count. That means how many of them are uniform out there. Anything that's more than a collar behind is not going to put on an ear. Take these two numbers to our replant tool on the web page and try to make the best guess from there as far as how many bushel per ear you think is possible. Now use the upper end of the range for your flex hybrids. Use the lower end of the range for your determinate hybrids. And again, plants that are more than one collar behind the neighboring plant they're just going to count as stand, not as ear count. And of course, they're going to go against your ear count because the more stand you have, the less bushels per ear you're going to be able to get. Plug your numbers into the calculator, of course, such as your termination cost, your replant cost, your APH yields, and your price of corn. You'll also need to enter in what the actual replanting date is going to be. When are you going to be able to replant this field? Then add in your stand and your ear count numbers to kind of best use the table that's in there to project bushels per ear. We used to always say six, six and a half. We know now based on our flex hybrid plots that we can climb that up to 10 plus. So again, that's going to be an important factor as you put this together. And this is also a place where your hybrid yearbook comes into play. So look at the hybrid total flex ranking in that yearbook. If that rating is a six or higher, you go to the upper end of the range as far as bushels per ear. If it's four or below, you go to the lower end of that range. With today's corn prices, the replant decision will be a lot different than what you're used to. With 450 corn, Replanted on May 23rd, you're at about a break even there at 24,500 ears. But $7 corn, 
That's going to push that replant break even up closer to 26,500, 27,000 years, depending on, again, how much flex you have in your hybrid. We do not, repeat, do not thicken corn stands up by planting more corn next to it, especially $7 corn. So you tear out the old stand and you start over, but you need to react quickly. If we're spotting in corn, this is a good place to take a look at Yetter's re-sweep re for your planter, where you can tear out the old crop and put the new one in at the same time. Use the soybean calculator uh, as well on our webpage to make replant calls on these rough soybean fields. Now if you decide to interplant into the existing soybean stand to thicken it up, you need to subtract two to three bushel from what the calculator is telling you. The calculator does adjust for early planted beans and pre solstice flowering to get that yield premium. With early planted beans, we accept lower populations to maintain the pre solstice flowering. Low populations, though, will bring more weed pressure, and we need to be able to manage that pressure. Unfortunately though, beans emerging now have most likely missed the early solstice window, meaning that we don't have that yield premium. So with today's prices, uh, replant will be triggered quicker as well in soybeans. Without a yield premium uh, to early planting, replanting for better weed control and a slightly better yield uh, may be worth it. Interplanting into the existing stand of beans to thicken it up, again, will give you better weed control, but do subtract two to three bushel from what the calculator is telling you. If the traits work out, you could change your traits, replant a full stand, and use herbicide to take out the existing stand, especially if the first go-around was non-GMO. Here again, work with actual numbers when making replant decisions. Now there's a lot of beans out there that lost both cotyledons coming through the crust. These beans will help in weed control, but they're going to get so far behind the neighboring plants that have cotyledons, they'll be a very poor pod set. Again, the replant calculator is on our website under the tools tab. It seems to be our planning dates of April 26th through the 28th, as of right now, are giving us the most trouble. The pest uh, bosses out there, you need to have your team focus on cutworm feeding by the end of the week. We've had per some pretty impressive cutworm flights from April 22nd through May 2nd. Any fields that had vegetation, either the winter annuals, chickweed, henbit, or cover crop, out there in this period are at substantial risk. Even if you work the field after this time period, they're still there. The eggs were laid and they will be a problem that we'll have to deal with. These catches have been strong from the east to the west. Some of the highest catches coming out of the Taswell area. You guys over there will want to thank Rebecca Pratt from Sun Ag who is running the cutworm traps for us over there. I know we're focusing on getting the rest of this crop in, but do not take your eye off the ball even after it comes up. We will have to spray some of these fields for cutworm. Now these critters are easy to control. You don't want to let them have much of your $7 corn. Pest teams, between stand evaluation and making replant calls and monitoring insects, we got a lot to do, uh, a lot to keep an eye on as we kick off the growing season. But that's why you get paid the big bucks. To stay up to date, check out our website at croptechinc.com and subscribe to our podcast, Boots in the Field Report. Keep her safe, keep her moving.